Thanks so much for the support recently on the preset pack. We're nearly at about 200 preset pack downloads, which is honestly insane. Thank you so much for all of that. If we do get to 200 downloads of the preset pack though, the next one is gonna have a little giveaway on it. So if we can get to 200 downloads on the preset pack, I'll do a, probably like a 10 to 20 person giveaway on the next preset pack. So please, if you wanna download it, if you haven't already, go ahead and get it. But yeah, I just wanted to mention that. Thank you so much and enjoy the video. All right, so first things first, you wanna get your text. So you just wanna come over and right click under here. You wanna click new, you wanna click text, and that'll bring up a new text layer. And first we're gonna do your name, and then we'll do the highlights, and then we'll do the number. But just write your name. I'm just gonna write name on it so that it so that it can be used uh, anywhere, because I'm gonna actually release the project file. There'll be links in the description to the project file and probably the pinned comment as well. If you wanna download it, instead of having to follow the tutorial, you can just use a project file and just tweak what's in it. So it's your name. It might be really small. If it's really small, just uh, come over here and to the right where it says character and then come and increase this a bit, the pixels. I'm gonna go for about that size, I reckon. And then you just wanna come over to a line and just uh, center it like this, but don't center it like this because it's usually a little bit higher. I'm gonna put it about here, but it's really up to you. You just wanna make it a little bit higher than the center just because all the other stuff's gonna go below it. So I'm gonna go, I reckon I'm gonna go about here. If you wanna move it up and down, you can hold shift and it will lock it to the center so you don't have to keep aligning it to the center. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put it about here, I reckon. I think that looks good to me. So that's name. And now what we want to do is we want to add all the other name text. So to add the second text, all I'm going to do is just click on this down here, control C and control V, and then it's going to um, add a copy. And then I'm going to go to the bottom one, click on the bottom one, and I'm just going to drag it along a bit like this. And then I'm going to come over to character and I'm just going to change the color to a bright red to purpley color and then we get it's going to look like that and we're just going to come over to the bottom name text again and click on this and click t on the keyboard and that's going to bring up the opacity thing and i'm just going to put it to about 50 percent and there you go that's the sort of um shadow sort of thing that you can get by doing the text and this is the font by the way there'll be a link in the description to the font um to get it but yeah we got it like this what we're going to do is we're going to have a third name so i'm just going to take the top one this uh, again because we want it to be centered with the top one not the bottom one because the bottom one's a shadow just control C, control V once again. Drag this one to the bottom below all the other names and then just increase the size of this one. You can hold shift to lock it so that you don't increase the size incorrectly. And we're just gonna, we're just gonna center it again like this. Just play around with it until you like the size of it. Anyway, the backwards name, once again, to make this a black outline instead of what it looks like now, you just wanna come over to character. You just wanna come over to this right here and you just wanna click this little uh, no fill color button here on the top and then come over to the back like this click on it and make it black so i'm gonna make i've made it 1.5 pixels large i think that looks the nicest but it's up to you you can play around with it you might have a different um, resolution to me because i'm using a 1920 by 1080 you might be using 720p or 1440p so just play around with it but yeah this is what this looks like right now and now i'm going to show you how to do the um text below it we just want to grab the two top texts so these these texts here Control c Control v drag them down and then you just want to make sure you reorder it because currently you got the wrong one on the top so i'm just going to reorder it like this perfect and then i'm just going to change the name change what it says Mem make sure both of these are all in caps as well just because um the caps is how you get the text to look like this otherwise it will um, be in lowercase but it's really up to you what text you use but just for this text if you want it to look exactly the same it does have to be in caps but there you go so we got it like that and now i'm going to um shift click on the sides over here and just drag them to the middle shift click drag it to the middle just so that it's centered and that looks centered to me i'm going to actually decrease the size of this and squish it a bit just like this because that's roughly how um soylent does it in his pre in the previews that i've watched this off and then i'm just going to add the bottom text finally which is going to be the um number so Control c Control v once again drag this down and then just change it to the correct number i'm just going to do number 10 because i think double digits are a little bit easier for this sort of one so number 10 like that and then once again, just center it. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to uh, animate it, which is the main thing. So you just wanna go to your first name, uh, so the one that you place down first, you know, the, the main one that people are gonna be looking at. And you just wanna click on this pen tool up here. So you click on here, click on the pen tool up the top, or you can press G on your keyboard if you want. And you just wanna make a um, sort of square around the name. So just like this. It doesn't have to be a square, it's really up to you. You can make it like this if you want it to look a little bit uh, different. But yeah, so we've got a square around the thing now and we're gonna keyframe it. So what that means is we're gonna make it so that at one moment in time it's here and that's gonna be at the end. I'm gonna put that 30 frames in, which is half a second in. So I'm gonna have this here 30 frames in and then 30 frames before it's gonna be all the way over here. And this means that the text won't be seen until this comes on top of it, because that's how the mask works. So to do that, you just wanna come down to the name that you applied this to, click on it. 
and then click on masks click on mask one and then come to where you want it to um be like finalized where you want this to look like this so i've got mine at 30 frames you can look down here to to see uh, how many frames you're in and i'm just going to click mask path click the little stopwatch by mask path and then drag it all the way back to the start and you want to put a keyframe here by pressing this and then you just want to select all of these up here and then just drag it drag it back so that it's not touching the text and you can see that the text is gone so if i go back and show you that's where the text is that's where it isn't because the text has to be inside this to be uh, on the clip so if we just drag it over here it'll be gone what we're going to do now is we're going to come down again to the mask we're going to control c click on the mask bit here and click control c because we want to copy the mask and we're going to actually paste it on the second name make sure your pinhead is um a, i'm going to go five frames from the start because we want it to be a little bit staggered and then just press Control v again and it will place it on the second name and what this means is that there's a little delay so you can see like this you can see how the bat the behind goes first and then the top goes second and that's what we want it to look like so just like this so there you go that's exactly what we want now what we're going to do is we're going to copy the mask again and we're going to go to the very uh the very bottom name so the very back name the big uh, black outline one and we're gonna we're gonna come towards halfway through i reckon where this text comes or maybe slightly before and we're gonna paste it and we're gonna press u on our keyboard to bring up the keyframes we're gonna just drag this along a little bit longer because this one's gonna take longer to go what you can do if you want if you don't want them all to come from the same uh, way which i think it looks better if they don't what you can do you can come to the mask on the background one and what you can do is you can uh, you can zoom out by holding alt and then um scroll wheeling so you just want to click on the corners shift click on the corners of the thing and then drag it to the other side on the first keyframe and then it will just make it come in from the other side, which I think it looks a bit, little bit nicer if it's uh, different. So there you go. It will come in from the other side instead of the. Uh, it will come in from the other side instead of the uh, front side, the same side as the other ones. So it just looks a little bit nicer. It looks a little bit different. Now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, posterize it. So what we, what that means is we're basically going to make it so that the um, FPS is slightly lower when it comes in, because this looks a little bit nicer. If it's too smooth, it just looks a little bit weird. So to do that, all you want to do is you want to click on all of the name ones. So all of the ones that we just keyframed. So all of the, so these three here, we can want to come down to the left, shift click on them. So like this, shift click, get all three of them in. And then we want to right click. We want to click pre-compose. And then we want to, I'm going to name it name. But it, it's up to you what you name it. Just remember which one it is, you know. And I'm going to click OK. So we want to click on it now. And we want to add posterize time. So come to effects and presets and search posterize time. And then just it's under time and just drag it on to the top clip like this and then change the frame rate i like to go to 10 but it's really up to you okay so now we're gonna do the highlights text and the way here that he adds the highlights text is slightly different so to do this you want to come to the um, top highlights or the bottom highlights and then you just want to um click on it so now you just want to come to where your behind name is halfway through um completing so roughly here i think that's about halfway through completing and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to the transform tab on my top highlights text and I'm going to click on position. I'm going to keyframe it so that it's here at this point in time. And then I'm going to come back to the start of the clip and I'm going to drag it to the left. I'm going to drag the left one, which is the X to the left. So that's all the way over here. Just like this, just so it's off screen and it should slowly come in like this. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do the exact opposite for the highlights too. We're going to come down and you can press P on your keyboard if you want to get to position quicker. We're going to keyframe it here and we're going to drag it and we're going to come back to the start of the clip and we're going to drag it the other way this time. So, it so they come in from different angles. And now what we're going to do, that's literally perfect. That's all we need to do. And now we're going to do the same thing that we did with the names. We're going to shift click on it, right click, pre-compose, and then we're going to call this highlights. And then we're going to add posterize time again and we're going to make it 10 fps we're going to go on to the uh, number you want to um pre-compose them first so just like this right click pre-compose and then just call it i'm just going to call it um, number but it's really up to you so you need to already pre-compose them first we don't add effects to the actual numbers you want to do something a little bit different i know we put it here already but this was just to see what we're doing we're actually going to have to move the number and stuff it's going to be a slightly confusing but what we want to do we want to go into the pre-composition by double clicking on it and then what we want to do is we want to move the numbers. So just hold down, move them up and move them near to the top like this, the very top of your um, 
uh, comp pre-composition here. Come back to your normal composition and they'll be at the top. But what we're going to do now is we're going to actually move the pre-composition. So to do that, you just want to drag it, drag it down like this and bring it back so that it's where, where it was before you um, move the numbers underneath. So I'm going to do this. I want it to be about here, I think. So yeah, I think that looks nice. We're just going to go back to normal. And now, now what we can do is we can start to add the effect for this and it's called, and it's called S underscore shake. The Sapphire FX, there'll be a link in the description to Sapphire FX. This is a plugin and it's paid, but there'll be links in the description to it. What we want to do first though, before we uh, apply the effect, is we want to right click and we want to pre-compose it again. I'm going to do a number posterize. I'm going to call it that because we're going to add a posterize on top of this. But we want to go back into it and then we want to add the shake effect. This is just because if you add it and then pre-compose it, the um, shake effect gets carried over to the top pre-composition for some reason. So you have to pre-compose it before you add the shake effect. It's just something to note. But anyway, what we're going to do now is we're going to add the tilt shake effect. We're going to add the tilt wave effect. We're gonna, I'm going to increase the amplitude to about 10. And then I'm going to turn off the X shake like this. Turn off the Y shake. And the Z shake should already be off. But if it's not for some reason, then go and turn it off. Uh, but yeah, we want the tilt round amp to be off as well. We want the wave amp to be 10. And we want to make sure that the wrap X and wrap Y are on no. And what we want to do is we want to add, add a bit of motion blur, just like this. And we want to find where we are. So let's go into the normal one. Let's find where we want it to start. So I'm going to make it start roughly here where the where the highlights just comes in i'm going to make it start here so just remember where this is double click on it come down to here effect s underscore shake keyframe the amplitude so like this amplitude is going to be zero and then you can go page up and page down to go one frame ahead so one frame ahead by clicking page down and then i'm going to increase the amplitude to one and then i'm going to go a couple frames ahead probably to here and go to zero okay i think that looks nice what we're going to do now is we're going to find where the shake starts so right here by pressing um page down we can go forwards and page up we can go backwards so it starts right here and we're just going to come over to the pre-composition we're just going to trim it because we want the number to come in as it shakes like this and now what we're going to do is we're going to add a posterize time to it once again so posterize time and then add it to the top layer remember to add it to the top layer like this and make it 10 fps as usual so yeah i'm going to show you how to do the edited by text now because this is all done this is what this looks like so to do that we just want to come over to the second uh, cinematic like this we want to trim down the pre-composition so that they end perfectly on the second cinematic like that and we just want to add new text so we're going to have an edited by and then your name so to do this, you just want to come over to your original name text. At least this is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to grab the two top ones. I'm going to press Control C. And then we're going to come back to the normal one. I'm going to press Control V just like this. And it's going to add two new name text, which, which is what we want. I'm going to come over. I'm going to change the um, layers so that it's correct. And this is going to this is going to say edited by. So just, so just change what it says. Click on it. And now it might be out of the thing, but we're going to just change the size soon. Once again, edited. By. And now we're going to change the uh, size, so just shift click on both of them and come over to the pixels on the right under character again and just lower it a bit. I'm going to make it uh, this big, I think maybe that big. And then you're going to have your name under it. I'm going to write a uh, name again just because I want it to be a little bit more ambiguous. But yeah, to do that, we just want to shift click once again, control C, control V as usual. And then we just want to swap what layer they're on like that so that the white's at the top. Then we want to shift click them both drag them down so they're below and then change what it says so click on the top one change it to name click on the bottom one change it to name once again and we want to make it a uh, fit so it's the same size as so that it's the same length almost as the top one and to do that you just want to come over to the pixels and increase it so i'm going to do that i want it to be the same size it's really up to you i want it to look like this and now we want to center it so we're just going to shift click on all of them so make sure we have all of these selected. So on the bottom left, and we're just going to come over to, um, I'm just going to bring it into the middle. You can hold control to uh, lock it to the middle. So that's locked to the middle and that's locked to the middle as well. Now what we want to do is we want to keyframe the mask again. The, we only need the mask for the edited by, and then the name is going to have a different um, transition. So we're going to come down to the edited by, and we're going to grab the mask and the mask path, and we're going to start it. And we're going to go a couple of frames in. I'm going to go about here. I think and then I'm gonna keyframe the mask so keyframe it so it's here come back to the start keyframe it again and I'm gonna drag the mask drag the mask off the screen by shift clicking on all the corners and then just zooming out a bit and dragging it off the screen I'm gonna drag it just to here so this is what that looks like and we're gonna do the same thing so we're just gonna copy the mask 
paste it on the other name. We want to make sure that the top name staggered again, so I'm just going to bring the um, keyframe like this, bring it forwards a bit, so that the lower name comes first. You see how the lower name is coming first before the top name. That's what we want it to look like. We want to drag it off a bit like this. So yeah, this is what it looks like. All right, so now for name, to make the transition from name, you just want to come down to toggle switches and modes in the bottom left. You just want to click on it, and then it should come up with this. If you already have this, you don't need to click on this, but if it looks like, if your sort of bar over here looks like this, click on toggle switches and modes and it will bring this up. If it already looks like this, that's perfect. All you have to do now is you have to come to the name, the name things right here. You just want to click on the little cube, so click under the cube right like this, and it will make them 3D layers, which is what we want. So we're going to shift click on both of them, because we're going to give them the same keyframes. We're going to press R on our key one, it's going to bring up the rotation. And what we're going to do is we're going to change the Y orientation. What we need to do first is we need to click Control or Home, and it's going to center the anchor point so that when we um, do the rotations, it doesn't rotate over here, it rotates in the center. So Control alt home to do that, and it will center the anchor points. Make sure you're holding, make sure you're, um, you've selected both of these when you do that. But anyway, what we're, what we're going to do now is we're going to come to the very start of where these uh, this comes in, just like here. I'm going to go a few frames ahead. I want, the, um, I want this to come in first, and then like this to sort of come in halfway through. But they're going to finish at the same time, if that makes sense. So to do that, you just want to click on the Y rotation, so click on the little stopwatch, and then start it at 90, where it's going to be invisible. And then just come over, I'm going to go to where the edited by finishes, roughly here. So just like this, and then I'm going to change the Y rotation to zero, just like that. And here you have it. So there you go, perfect. Just like that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to group them all at once this time. And then pre-compose them. So just remember, shift click on all of them, pre-compose them, just like that. I'm not going to give it a name. And then we just want to add posterize time once again and put it to 10 FPS. And that is the text completely done. So this is what this looks like. Okay, but now the text is done. That isn't completely it with the Soylent intro. What we're going to do now is we're going to actually add a. a a blur over the top for the transitions because that's important so that it looks a little bit less choppy when it just transitions like this what we're going to do is we're going to have um, a blur so to do that we're going to add an adjustment layer on top and we're going to go we're going to right click on the thing over here new adjustment layer and it's going we're going to leave it over the top we're going to just use keyframes to make sure that it's correct and what we're going to do is we're going to add gaussian blur so we're going to add gaussian blur which is uh you don't need a plugin for gaussian blur just drag it on and we're going to come to the start of the clip. We're going to come over to the top left, make the blurriness uh, 30. We're going to click tick repeat edge pixels here. And we're going to keyframe it. So we're going to press the little stopwatch. And then we're going to go into the clip where this all starts coming up, like right here, and put it to zero again. So it should start like this. Perfect. And we're going to just do the same thing on the transition. So I'm going to press U on the keyboard to bring up the keyframes going to come to the very middle of the transition change the blurriness to 30 again come roughly over here I reckon it's up to you how many frames it really depends on uh, what you've done here but I'm going to put this to zero so it's going to go zero and then it's going to blur again and we're going to go roughly the same number of frames afterwards and put it back to zero again so it should look like this I'm going to actually increase the uh, length of this and I'm also gonna, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna click on the middle one and press F9 and it should um, give it a sort of smoother curve on the top. So yeah, so this is what it looks like now. And we're gonna do a final one at the end, just here. We're gonna increase the blurriness to 30 at the very last keyframe, come a few frames before and put it to zero again. And now we're gonna add one last effect onto the adjustment layer. We're gonna add brightness and contrast. This is the final thing we have to do. I just prefer it to be a little bit brighter on the transitions. So we're just going to keyframe the brightness at 25 at the start. We're just going to follow the keyframes that we've already put down and then put it to zero here. Bring the pinhead over to here. Brightness should be zero again. So let's bring it to the middle, make it 25. Come back here, put the brightness back to zero. Come to here, put the brightness to zero. Come to the very end of the clip, put the brightness back to 25 again, and then come to the keyframe just before and put it back to zero again. And this is the whole thing done, and this is what it should look like.
so there you have it i hope you enjoyed the video you can pick up the project file for this uh, in the links in the description and the link probably in the pinned comment as well it was just really helpful if you uh if you can't really figure out how to do this and you need a bit of help the project file just has this exact stuff in it it'll have the whole thing and you'll just be able to follow it along or just use it as a template and actually just um change the name of uh, who it is in there as well so change the name so it's your name you can also pick up my uh, premiere pro preset pack um, the links will be in the description and probably the pin comment as well if you want to just have a easier time editing on Premiere Pro if you want to just drag effects on instead of having to you know work them yourself it's really simple to do really easy uh, 200 plus presets in there and stuff I'm gonna release an After Effects version of the uh, Premiere Pro pack soon but for now it's just a Premiere Pro pack there was pro there'll probably be a pin comment with the After Effects one uh, if you're watching this a uh, couple of weeks after I've released a video because there's a likely chance that I will have completed the After Effects one by then but yeah I'll see you in the next one